everyone and welcome to my channel. This pick a card reading is going to be focused on your past life. So who were you? Maybe we can get information on where you were from, what your life was like. So by all means, if you haven't had a chance to focus on the stack that you feel maybe resonates or pulls you in the most, please go back to the beginning of the video. There is a short clip and a picture in the beginning that you can pause and you can focus and take as long as you need to in order to pick the stack that feels right to you. By all means, pick more than one stack if you feel led to do so. Readings are general, obviously, so I don't expect them to resonate with everybody watching. And if this pick a card reading perhaps doesn't connect well for you, um, you can check out my pick a card playlist because I have a bunch of other readings there that might. These readings are also timeless and they are here for whenever the universe nudges you to watch. That's always going to be the best time for you is whenever you feel that push to watch. So they are timeless whether you watch it now uh, at the upload or you know a year from now, 10 years from now, it doesn't really matter. It's whenever it's brought into your awareness, um, that's when it's probably going to be the best time to watch, okay? So, um, I know it's not a love reading, but, you know, with past lives, we don't know what that entails. So, I'm going to leave it open to interpretation in regards to roles being flip-flopped and, you know, reversed or vice versa in regards to dealings with other people, Okay. So again, six lovely card stacks on the table. By all means, take all the time that you need to choose the stack that feels right to you. I'm going to move on to stack number one right away. I'm going to get the rest off the table and I'll see you in a minute. Stack number one, you chose this very fiery labradorite. I'm going to put that here. Let's see, who were you in a past life? Where were you from? What was your life like? Asia, okay. So an Asian country, somewhere in that continent, food and hunger, forgiveness. Okay, I feel like that's saying there's something that needs to be forgiven now in this life almost. Okay, the tower, the queen of cups, and the magician. Okay, um... Real quick, uh, because it was kind of what I was hearing from this, and something about the tower kind of made me feel that way as well. Um, what I'm hearing from this is the need to forgive past life karma in order to truly manifest in your life right now. Okay, I say manifest right now because of the magician. I feel like in a past life, you didn't have the best of times, not with this food and hunger card, okay? You might have struggled, and then you have the tower. So I feel like hunger, hard times, maybe financial difficulty in the past, and somewhere in Asia, you know, could be India, could be China, could be anything in that continent, as far as where you were from. You, you know, and part of me is also feeling that you could have also elected a life of humility in your past life as well. I know that there are some, and I'm going to just put this out there because I don't know for sure, but I, part of me is really feeling that this could have been the case, that this was um, something that you elected, okay? You elected a life where you were humbled and you relied upon the grace and the offering and the charity of other people. I know that there are monks out there who um, they live amongst themselves, but they rely on the charitable gifts and um, donations of the public, okay, in order to, to live, survive, and, and thrive, okay? So I'm wondering if that maybe is part of what you did or who you were in a past life. Um, but I am getting the vibe of needing to forgive <coughs> the things that didn't go your way in the past. It's like almost like healing past life karma. Forgive yourself. Um, work on, I'm, I'm also hearing like the need to work on 
that aspect of your being in order to heal yourself for the future, okay? Because the tower card is like that energy where it's like you clean the slate, right? Something gets washed away from you or the old ways of being, believing, thinking, living, they kind of get knocked out from under you, but usually for the best reasons, right? So some of us carry around things from our past life that we don't even realize are hindering us from future growth, right? So it's almost like this is what you, honestly, I feel like this is a current lifetime that you're working on healing this past life, I guess, these past life issues towards money and prosperity and abundance because of this food and hunger. It's it's a lack of mentality possibly from the past that you're you're learning to forgive and let go now and part of that tower energy is getting rid of that like wiping the clay sling, uh, clean of any residual past life uh build up that could prevent you now in this present lifetime from being the best magician co-creator of your life that you could possibly be um, you have to remember the magician is the one who can manifest his life in the way that he envisions it, the way that he feels it, right? So he marries his mind and his heart in order to create the perfect recipe to bring his inner world to his exterior world, right? To manifest his dreams into reality as above, so below. So I feel like you're learning how to do that with this queen of cups energy, Um you could technically right now be Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy. Maybe that was your energy in a past life. But nonetheless, this is like your intuitive your intuitive heart. Um, it's more like you're learning to, to follow the dreams, the wishes of the heart space in order to manifest. Where before in a past life, you might have allowed um, you might have allowed the the lack to prevent you from achieving things, right? Or you might you might have chosen a life um that did not focus on material things okay and maybe that's that's what it is you're learning to do in this life also is balance the material versus the spiritual right so it might have been in a past life you were highly spiritual you were more focused on your enlightenment and the growth um and the uh, that you, I guess if spiritual growth is what I'm hearing from this, you were focused more on your spiritual growth than you were on the things that you possessed, right? So you would rather do without, in a sense. And there's like this forgiveness of whether it be yourself or others or past life karma that, that you feel you still linger or have around you. Uh, you linger with or you still have around you but there's like this energy here where it's like I you're letting that go is what I'm feeling you're overcoming that okay so definitely a past life that did not focus on material things you were more focused on your um, on humility and your spirituality and your enlightenment okay and a lot of that in your you know in your past life meant um, kind of like shunning Things of the material earthly realm, okay? Uh, things of the world, like shutting that out. Um, it's like, but now I'm feeling, this is almost like reading like now, this bottom line. Like you're cleansing away the last of anything that will hold you back from past or previous mindsets. Um, in order to truly manifest from the heart with these two cards, okay? Because... Money is an energy, okay? So basically I'm feeling from this, money is an energy. You can still be a very spiritual and enlightened person, okay? Highly aware and spiritually adept, okay? Without having to shun everything from the material plane, okay? You can still bask in your blessings and still be very full in your heart spiritually, okay? It's almost like I'm hearing they're not mutually exclusive, right? You can have both. You can have material wealth and be spiritually full, okay? So I, I'm feeling, number one, people, that's kind of what this is about. You're learning how to balance those things in this lifetime, in this, yeah, in this journey, um, in this particular journey, okay? Whereas before there was, it was too too much one way. 
okay, over another. It was like there was there was no equilibrium in that, okay? It was kind of like this, all right? This is what I'm feeling, kind of like this or like this. <laughs> but in this life, it looks like um, you're learning how to balance those things, okay? So stack number one, um, this is what I'm picking up from your reading. You might have been a monk, all right? You might have shunned material life or material things or possessions in search of spirituality. Uh, and it's like in this life, you're working on cleansing away uh, the imbalance that you might have had. You might have gone over the top in regards to shunning things, uh, material possessions and wealth in the past. But now it's like you're, you're trying to balance those things because it's like when you realize you are worthy of everything, that also includes material blessings and financial abundance as well. So it's like in this life, you're learning how to do that. You're learning how to welcome that in because you know that you are worthy of it. Um, having those things doesn't make you any less worthy of spiritual enlightenment, okay, and vice versa. So I'm going to leave you here, stack number one. This is your reading as far as who you were, what was your life possibly like in a past life, uh, where you were from definitely looks like Asia. Okay, so I'm going to leave you alone. I'm going to move on. If you feel it connects, please do let me know in the comment section down below. Like, share, and subscribe to support this channel. And if you want a personal reading with me, all my information is in the description box down below. Much love and blessings to you. I'm going to move on to stack number two. Stack number two, you chose this lovely little amethyst, polished amethyst. Let's see, who were you in a past life? Maybe we could find out where you were from. What was your life like, number two people? Okay, this is money, finances, knighthood. Okay, maybe medieval times. Um, yeah, what's funny is that those coins look like they might be from that time. Okay, so finances, money, um, transportation, knighthood as well over here. So finances, knighthood, transportation, the chariot, all right, for whatever reason, I kind of want to put that over here where the knight card is. The hierophant, okay, and eight of cups. Now, this is curious because honestly, you want to know what I'm feeling from this? You might have been a Templar knight, okay, and I'm getting that from the hierophant and this knighthood card as well as finances. You might have also been a mercenary, okay, or, oh boy, the Crusades, all right? That's honestly what I'm feeling from this because we have two cards of transportation, or I'm sorry, not transportation, movement, okay? Yeah, you could have definitely been a railroad worker for sure, um, traveling the world or chucking coal into the train in order to get it to go absolutely you could have been a conductor sure um but i'm just honestly more than anything feeling this card rather than just a vehicle transportation more like just travel okay the eight of cups is also an energy that moves it goes places okay it leaves something behind in search of something and it's also a card of soul searching so my first thought when i saw this was What's funny is the chariot and the knight look very similar. Okay, they really do. So I'm getting the vibe that you could have been a mercenary, a religious Templar knight of some sort. Uh, I know that that was for Christianity, right? Uh, so a Templar knight, a mercenary of some sort that was paid to go on a crusade or fight for a cause or something like that because of the money. All right. It definitely feels religious because of the Hierophant energy. Okay. So the, the Hierophant is like church, religion, conformity, spirituality. Okay. And the chariot energy is also about movement forward on, you know, the chariot usually is depicted with two of his horses, right? And he's focused and he's moving forward. Determination. So, my first thing, the first thing that really popped into my head is like you going on a crusade, you fighting for some religious cause, making money off of that or um, 
getting paid to do so, getting paid to be a mercenary or a soldier of some sort for a cause that I feel might have been bigger bigger than you, you know what I mean? Big, a bigger cause, just put it that way. Some kind of religious reason. Um, it is a mission of the soul, perhaps, because of the Eight of Cups here. Lots of movement, traveling the world for whatever cause or idea that you had at the time. I would hate to think that if you were a knight, you were plundering. Um, but sometimes, you know, the money, you know, when, when you're on a crusade, you do... You do fight for a cause, I guess, and you do uh, sometimes with, with history, the way that it depicts itself, you can plunder, okay, and you get paid to achieve a goal. So I could see that. Um, I don't know why I just heard like maybe a Viking even. <laughs> some of you might have had a Viking, a Viking life in some way, but something that involved traveling for a cause, uh, a mercenary reason, whether you be a warrior a Knights Templar or something like that. But I do feel that the cause was something spiritual or religious, okay? Some kind of religious pilgrimage, possibly with the Eight of Cups, made you leave your home life in order to pursue this thing um, out of duty, I'm hearing, out of maybe obligation. Um, yeah, definitely a Knight or mercenaries, what I'm picking up. So, sag number two, um, I'm looking at this as well. Like, you could have been really focused, determined, and some of those things have probably um, lingered with you still, okay? Because the chariot is that determination to achieve a goal and to move forward. Um, I'm also getting the vibe that if you were a world traveler or if you traveled a lot, um, in a past life, you could have a tendency to like to travel now, still. And maybe you don't like to sit still is also the vibe that I'm getting from this. So you might not like to be the type to sit in one place too long. And I'm also getting from the, from the uh, cards here that when you believe in a cause, uh, you go over and above to help or to be a... Um, how would you say? <laughs> it's one of those things like when you when you get your head wrapped around something, you're you're focused and you're determined. You find a way to make it happen. Okay, there is a determination and a passion in the heart for whatever cause that you feel um, led to to help or assist with. Okay, so you might be a volunteer, even like maybe in this life you might be a volunteer. Or you're always trying to fight for a cause that is worthy to you or you feel is worthy in some way. Whether it be to donate your time, your energy, your resources to something. Um, I feel like that maybe has possibly trickled down to this existing life as well. But nonetheless, you're always on a journey for a higher cause or a higher purpose, I'm feeling. But mostly in a past life, I feel mercenary vibes. I also feel... A Knights Templar or um, a knight who was maybe on the Crusades and it caused you to travel for religious reasons and to fight for a religious cause. Okay, so stack number two, this is your reading. If you feel connects, please do let me know in the comment section down below. Like, share, subscribe, uh, click the bell for notification to support this channel as well. And if you want to book a personal reading with me, all my information is in the description box down below. Thank you so much. Stack number three, you chose this lovely fluorite. Okay, let's see, who were you? Where were you from? What was your life like in a past life? Okay, we have authority figures, male, female. That reminds me of Gemini, the energy Gemini. So I don't know if maybe some of you are Gemini watching. Uh, love life. The two of cups, okay. The Three of Cups, all right, and the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, um, I don't know why I'm getting the vibe of like in a past life, you might have been separated by fate or something like that in regards to somebody that you loved. Um, I'm not really getting vibes of like where you were from, but maybe more than anything, what your life was like, okay? 
So I feel like in a past life, you were in a love relationship. I feel like I need to put this two of cups over here by this male-female energy. Um, and then the three of cups underneath this authority figure, okay? I feel like there was a star cross, cross lovers vibe to this number three. Um, I feel like there were authority figures or people in your family or in your circle of friends that didn't approve of the connection that you had with a special someone. The Wheel of Fortune is showing me that your love life took a twist of fate, okay? Star-crossed lover, lovers is also what I'm hearing from this because of the Wheel of Fortune. Um, I'm getting the vibe of there was like a turn of events here with this Wheel of Fortune and the love life card that um, affected you in a past life. You, it could have had to do something with your sexuality, okay? Or your preference, right? And I feel like star-crossed lovers, maybe in a past life, there was, um, I guess, whatever social norms there were in a previous lifetime um, affected the love situation that you had going on in a past life. And again, the idea of star-crossed lovers um, and maybe the inability to be together because of the law or authority and social structures here with this and the three of cups again you know what will people think what will they say you know maybe something was unacceptable at that time in that lifetime uh, between you and another person all right maybe there was um i don't know i'm hearing like disputing families like kind of like a romeo and juliet vibe right um in regards to maybe family dynamics and something about you and your lover from the past in a past life finding difficulty in being together the wheel of fortune always throws you a curveball right and i feel like in a past life your love life took a serious curveball um i could see this as you know maybe you were part of the you know the lbgtq movement you know that obviously had to be sh hush hush back then <laughs> in a previous lifetime thank goodness today you know it's not a big deal but in the past you know if you had a different preference as far as uh anything beyond heterosexuality right um it caused a, it could have caused a lot of heartache and issues okay with the law and authority in a previous lifetime okay we've come a long way um, so I'm really do feeling like I'm really feeling like that was the case. There was something about your love life, okay, with this card here, in a previous life, that went against authority, that went against social, yeah, social structure and norms, okay. Um, and a, I, I'm feeling like just a crowd or people or people getting in the way, like three party situation, possibly even. People getting in the way of your two of cups or the love of your life in a previous lifetime. And there was some kind of twist or turn of fate that maybe... I'm feeling like maybe separated you or something like that. I'm, I am I have this little playing card. I, I have it on the side, playing card deck just in case. I have it on the side in case I need clarification. What I want, though, is clarification on this Wheel of Fortune, right? Because the Wheel of Fortune knocks things out of your life in order to bring you something new. It is a change in tra transition card, right? So it's kind of leaving it ambiguous there. I do want one card to kind of understand why this Wheel of Fortune is here. All right, the Six of Swords. Yeah, it was the vibe of, like I said, a twist of fate that maybe pulled you apart or separated you or something like that. The Six of Swords is all about moving away or leaving a situation behind in order to find peace and tranquility. So it could have been, like I said, star-crossed lovers, maybe weren't able to be together, you and your person in that lifetime, um, because of authority, social norms, social structures, it just wasn't allowed, something about there being an opposing force uh, with this male-female energy card here because it kind of talks about, you know, divine feminine, divine masculine. So I can see this as a twin flame energy as well with this two of cups, okay? And in a past life, it was a star-crossed lover situation as well, all right? The six of swords energy is about moving away. So either something kept you apart, destiny, fate, 
twist of fate or something like that in the past and forced you to leave or move away from them maybe across the ocean in some way because the six of swords six of spades is that energy where it's like um you know you are getting on that boat you are leaving something or someone behind okay so i feel like you had to leave them behind it could be okay because i feel like the last two readings i just did one and two right there were energies that felt like the the past life situation was lingering into the present it could still be happening now, okay? If you have a soulmate, if you have a, a twin, or if you have um, a kindred spirit connection, maybe there are some difficulties lingering from the previous lifetime you had together into this new one, okay? So star-crossed lover situation is what I'm getting here. Something about your the preference of your sexuality being against social norms back in whatever timeline that was in, okay? Um obviously we've come a long way so you know thank goodness for that but i'm gonna leave you here stack number three this is your reading um i hope that it connected for you if it did please do leave me a note or a comment in the comment section down below if you want to connect with me um please check out my etsy shop for a personal reading um you can check it out anytime and book whenever you're you know you want to and um also, you can check me out on Twitter and Instagram, like, share, subscribe, click the bell for notification as well because I upload often. So, sack number three, this is your reading. Sending you much love and I will see you soon. Okay, number four, you chose this rutilated quartz. Okay. All right, so let's see. Who were you in a past life? What was your life like? Where were you from? All right, let's see what we have. Karmic relationship. Okay. That kind of looks like um, like a World War One or Two bomber, right? So you definitely could have had some some connection uh, to that time frame, and we also have Greco-Roman times, so Greek times, Roman times. We're talking about Caesar, Plato, Socrates, all that good stuff, right? Um, so it might have you might have had some lifetime as well in that time period. You could also be from Greece or Italy, okay, as far as a place. But then again, the Roman Empire was very vast, okay? So um, it to took over a lot of real estate, all right? But if I have to just base it on this card alone, I would say Greece or Rome or, I mean, Italy, okay? Then you have this angel's card which tells me you might have also been an earth angel or an angel, okay? You could also have a spirit guide that still surrounds you, okay, from previous lifetimes. Okay, so let's take a look. We have, well, let me start with this one. I was doing it backwards. Um, we have the Eight of Pentacles, Page of Wands, and the six of pentacles so lots of pentacles here um i'm looking at this like i don't know why part of me is feeling like you have spirit guides that are still surrounding you as far back as greco-roman times all right and it's from these two cards and i feel like they're still communicating with you with the page of wands um you might have been a builder of some sort okay a carpenter you might have worked with your hands. You might have been a, a mechanic in World War One or Two with this card. Okay. You also might have been a nurse. I don't know why I'm feeling that. But definitely built something. You could have built... You could have been part of the builders of these, um, these monuments in Greece and in Rome, Roman times, okay? I'm also feeling like um, pages, you know, pages are students, right? So you could have been an architect is what I'm feeling, a, a student architect. I'm, I'm hearing like engineer, architect, mechanic, okay, from those times, whether it be World War One or Two, uh, maybe an architect in Greco-Roman times, a mathematician I'm feeling also for whatever reason. Um, Hypatia, she was a very famous um, female mathematician. 
a philosopher from Greco-Roman era. Um, so I'm getting that kind of vibe uh, from this for whatever reason. And I feel like uh, whatever you studied, whatever you studied aided the community, okay, or helped others in some way. Like it was almost like um, whatever energy and effort that you put into some kind of work in a past life was to help people. Okay, it wasn't just to use your talent for yourself. It was to use your talent for the greater good. Okay. Page of Wands is also about, um, I'm, I'm feeling like you were a teacher. Okay, so I know students usually show up as a page. You could have been the student of one of these trades, but I also feel like with this energy, Six of Pentacles, you might have also been a teacher. You might have been giving your skills, okay, the skills that you learned. You might have been communicating those to others in a past life with this Six of Pentacles, okay? Like helping others, giving of your time, your energy, and your effort to the aid of others, I'm feeling, with the Six of Pentacles, so you, you either taught people your skills, you pass those skills on in many lifetimes, I'm feeling. Um, and I'm feeling like you have a spirit guide as well that also communicates to you and kind of delivers ideas to you. And then you make those, uh, you put those ideas to work for the collective or for the greater good. Okay, so whether you did that in a past life or you're doing that now, that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting for you, stack number four people. I do feel like there was a special karmic relationship. Um, you know, you learned your lessons through the people that you had surrounded yourself with, okay, with the Six of Pentacles energy in a past life. Um, the people that you were involved in or with, I'm sorry, whether it be romantically or just in your environment, taught you things, okay? Because I think karmic, from what I understand, karmic relationships, they teach you lessons, life lessons that you need, and then you carry them on with you, um, you know, to better yourself, to, to learn, to evolve, to grow, okay? There's always a reason behind the lesson. It's never just in vain. So I feel like if you, you, acquired gifts and lessons from those that you met whether they be romantic familial um, working relationships whatever it was you took those lessons with you and you applied them to your life with this eight of pentacles you shared the the life lessons i also feel with others and you shared it with others in order to help them so in his s in in essence it's like you're kind of like an earth angel here okay so number four, I'm calling you Earth Angel. I feel like all the gifts and the talents that you acquired from previous lifetimes, you use them um, also in this life to help others. Okay, I could see, like I said, I could see you as an orator with the Page of Wands, a teacher, a student, maybe an architect as well. I could see you as um, an engineer of some sort, um, a mechanic in World War One or Two. A fighter pilot possibly as well you could have been of Greek or Italian descent with this card also you could also still have spirit guides that communicate to you from those previous lifetimes okay so stack number four this is your reading um, if you feel connects please do leave me a comment in the comment section down below like share subscribe leave um, or click the bell I'm sorry for notifications because I do upload often and if you want a personal reading with me, please check out the description box down below. All my information is there. You can visit my Etsy shop and book a reading at any time. So I'm going to leave you here, stack number four. This is your reading. Much love to you, and I'll see you soon. Stack number five, you chose this lovely spirit quartz. I'm going to put that over here. Let's see, who were you in a past life? What was your life like? Uh, maybe we could find out even where you were from, okay? So let's take a look. Wow. Okay. Galactic. So right away I got star. I'm thinking star seed. Okay. Um, I don't think you're, I think your very f first life, uh, hailed from the stars. I don't think you're from this life, uh, time. Okay. Or this earthly plane plane. I think your soul or your spirit is much, um, more multidimensional. Okay. So right away, uh, star seed vibes. You come from the stars. The earth is not your home. Okay. Biblical. Okay. So maybe biblical times. 
maybe that was your first incarnation um, after having come from the stars. So definitely more than 2,000 years old, okay? Native American. All right, that makes sense. Um, Native American and galactic. Um, the Native Americans believe in star people. Okay, so this really goes together in that sense. Um, maybe you were a Native American during biblical times. Okay, so I can see Native American whether it be North, Central, South America. And then I could also see um, Middle Eastern countries, okay, like Israel, um, over there in the Middle East somewhere with this Biblical Times card, okay? So, got a lot going on here. Let's see what else we have. Okay, so we have the Page of Pentacles, Queen of Swords, and the Ten of Swords. All right. Um, wow. Okay, so honestly, <laughs> what I'm feeling from this is that I'm, I'm getting the vibe of being like very old, right? Your soul being old and having had many lifetimes. And the vibe that I'm getting from that is because of this Ten of Swords, right? Oh my gosh, this is weird because it's kind of like resonating with me too. Um, I just heard from the Ten of Swords. Wow, this feels really personal. Um, <laughs> all right, the Ten of Swords is feeling like to me that this is your last life here on this earthly plane. So part of me wants to say to you, Starseed, make it count. Okay, make it count. Because I, I really do feel like this is saying, this is, this is it for you. This is your last life. You've been, you've, <laughs> you've literally started from the stars. I'm feeling like this is BC era, okay? or slightly after and probably in this incarnation you might also you might still be Native American okay um, or in your most recent lifetime you were Native American but nonetheless like I said Central South North um, Canada Alaska Caribbean even okay but I feel like this is saying this is this is it for you. I mean, what's crazy is these two cards kind of feel the same. I mean, look at the stars in the sky. I don't, I mean, I know it could be snow, right? Because there's white on the ground. But they also look like stars in the sky. Very similar in feel. So, anyway, um, I feel like you have cosmic origins, okay, from the stars. I feel you're a star seed. You've had several different lifetimes, probably at least 10, okay? Because we have 10 swords. And every lifetime feels like it puts a sword in your back, a lesson that you learn and you carry with you into the next life, right? But this 10 is an ending. It's a completion. And I feel like one of these swords is the very last one. After this life, I think you're going back to the stars. That's what it feels like, number five. Page of Pentacles is saying you've learned, you've grown a lot in this lifetime um, or over the course of your lifetimes, okay? And you've gained wisdom, truth, and understanding of who you are with the Queen of Swords, okay? So it could be air sign, you could be Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Um, but nonetheless, I'm reading this or feel this more like an energy, like here is the sword of truth in her hand. And, you know, to me, the Queen of Swords represents authenticity. The same with the King of Swords. Like, after many lifetimes of learning, right, and growing with this Page of Pentacles, understanding things, being a student of life, here you finally come into your own with this Queen of Swords energy, understanding who you are with utmost clarity, 
and truth, right? So the Queen of Swords stands in her truth. She has clarity of heart and mind. She sees things and situations and people for who they are. So I'm looking at you like you see who you are. You know who you are. You know where you come from. You're living a very authentic life, I feel, in this lifetime. And it's because of everything you've experienced in your previous lifetimes. Okay, all these lessons have literally built you up. All the lessons from previous lifetimes that far back into the now has built you up to know who you are now, to have learned and evolved and kind of um, transformed, I'm hearing, into the most authentic version of your soul that you are right now. And because of all those lessons learned, okay, time and time again, you it's almost like I'm hearing like a refinement of your character with this Queen of Swords. And the knowledge of who you are is why I'm feeling like this is it for you. This is going to be your last life. Okay. So I'm also hearing tribe from this card here, the Native American card. Like I feel like you've, tr you've found your tribe, right? You know where you come from. You, I'm also hearing you, like you found, you, you know who your tribe is here in the stars, but you also know who it is here on the ground. Because this TP is sitting on Mother Earth, right? So I feel like you you know where your tribe comes from on the earthly plane as well as the cosmic one. So I feel like you're a star person, star seed. Um, your purpose for coming here was to learn. To learn more about Earth, okay? Because of this earthly um, page of pentacles here. So it could be Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus. That is Earth energy. So you came from the stars to learn. And every um, situation that you have been in has kind of like been uh, one more notch in your tool belt. Okay? That's what I'm getting from this. You could have also been a furniture maker, a builder, or something like that. You know, if we're looking at mundane things. But I feel like every lesson learned was a notch in your spiritual tool belt more than anything. It has put you on a path to find your tribe over here. You've connected very well with Mother Earth. Maybe you love nature. Okay, maybe, the, maybe nature has always been part of who you are. Um, but I think... You've learned so much. You've seen so much with this Queen of Swords. You have evolved. You've grown up. You leveled up. And because of that, no more swords in the back after this. Okay? So I feel like, honestly, number five. Um, I don't think you're coming back after this one. Okay? And I don't blame you. Because I, I don't think I am either. So <laughs> number five, Starseed. Um, I'm going to leave you here. If you feel this connects for you, by all means, please, uh, by all means, please do leave me know. Uh, oh my gosh, I can't even talk. I'm, get, I'm getting a little emotional with this one. Um, please let me know if this connects in the comment section down below, okay? Um, if you want to support this channel, please like, share, subscribe, click the bell for notification because I do upload often. And if you want to book a personal reading with me, by all means, um, please do contact me. Check me out on Etsy. You can book a reading with me there at any time. So much love and blessings to you. Stack number five, fellow starseed, sending you much love. I'm going to leave you here and I'm going to move on to stack number six. Stack number six, you chose this beautiful hematite. Okay, I'm going to put that there. All right, let's see. Who were you? What was your life like? Uh, your past life like? And maybe we can find out where you were from. Okay, so let's see. Who were you? Oh, Unrequited love, high priest or priestess, okay, vows, All right, they look like they could, that could be like a nunnery or, um, why, why did I hear like Vestal Virgin, okay, if you've ever been to Rome, all right, um, the temple, there's a temple there still where the Vestal Virgin, Virgins used to light the eternal flame, all right, so that's kind of what I'm getting from this. And that falls in line with the priestess vibes that are here, 
okay? Uh, so we have, oh boy, okay, we have six, <laughs> look at that. We have six of cups, two of cups, and the star. All right, people, sack number six, people, right away, you know what it's saying to me? There was something in regards to a lover, okay, that was unrequited. And because of that in a past life, um, it forced you into service or like not forced you, but you decided to go into some kind of spiritual service, whether you were a priestess, a nun, a vestal virgin, maybe in Roman times, um, you decided to devote yourself to your spiritual, I'm hearing your spiritual craft. So some of you could be wise women okay wise women medicine men you know anything like that shamans i'm feeling like you and you know what's crazy you have the number six right you got the number you are the number six and you have the six of cups so i know we don't have the lovers here on the table but i can't help but think of the lovers card because it is a number six and the number six talks about harmony and balance and you know, usually soulmate vibes, right? Especially the Six of Cups. Six of Cups is that energy where it's like kindred spirit, soulmate connection. It's, it's very hard to disentangle yourself from. Sometimes I don't wish the Six of Cups energy on anyone in a sense because it can be rough. Um, when you have this energy, you know, stalk you. Um, I'm not saying that the person is stalking you, but I'm saying like the, the soulmate connection energetically feels like it's stalking you with this card. But nonetheless, I feel like there was a love situation from your past life, most definitely with these, these sixes everywhere, um, and this two of cups especially. So soulmate energy that you could not forget or you had to kind of like remove yourself from. This soulmate, whoever they were in a past life, okay, um, with the star, it's like your person was out of reach, okay? They were inaccessible all right the stars are always up in the sky you admire them from afar but they you can't touch them they're like either out of your league or out of reach or at a distance from you so i feel like you had a lover who maybe did not requite the love or was not yeah it was not requited um it was not equal give and take maybe the lover left with the six of cups energy it maybe they left you or abandoned you in some way and because of that you decided to devote yourself to a higher calling in regards to some form of spirituality or religion okay i'm feeling like that was your um your way of escape escaping the connection or putting distance between you and that person who didn't return the love. Um, if they abandoned you in some way. Um, I feel like this soulmate and you maybe, I don't know. I mean, I do feel like there, for some of you, there were instances where this connection was authentic. But there might have been something that got in the way and didn't allow you to be together. So... It's kind of like that vibe that if you were a priest, okay, and you took vows to the church, or if you vowed to be celibate, if you were a priestess also, there were some, um, in, in history, there were some, like I said, the Vestal Virgins vowed not to marry. They were devoted to their god or goddess, okay? So they took vows of celibacy in devotion to their deity and it's like i feel like you did that and that's what kept you from your person more than this unrequited love but it was more like a i love you but i can't because i'm devoted to a cause i'm devoted to my deity i'm devoted to my temple um so i can't give you that part of me so it's like you chose your spiritual path over your lover okay Nonetheless, you never forget, you never forgot your love interest. Um, the two of cups, you know, is that, that eye to eye, that heart to heart. And it's like you put distance between you and your love interest um, could be in favor of your spiritual calling. Okay. Um, 
so that's why it was unrequited not that your person didn't love you but that it was just an you know the circumstance you, you couldn't you know you were devoted to your calling okay devoted to your spiritual calling despite the love that you felt for somebody i think you were in love with somebody they were in love with you um but you had to put distance between you and them because of the calling it just wasn't allowed it was um forbidden okay i'm hearing like forbidden love so in a past life there was a highly spiritual calling here one that required that you sacrifice um car like carnal love okay in favor of your spirituality in devotion to your deity in whatever form that was okay so I feel like um I don't know I'm getting the vibe that with these two cards like the two of cups and the star I don't know. I'm getting the vibe that this, there's something about, again, I know I already said that there was a, a vibe of star-crossed lovers, right? Um, I forgot what pile it was. There was a vibe of star-crossed lovers. This is kind of giving me the vibe, but like literally because you have the star card, okay? So definitely star-crossed lover vibe here too in a past life. Um, but it was because of, not because of the, se oh yeah, the, that other pile was because of sexuality. Like there was something forbidden about the connection in some way and maybe about um their their uh sexuality okay but in this case it's more like it was your duty your calling the vows that you took okay um toward your calling that is preventing that prevented you and your lover in the in a past life from being together i mean who knows i mean some of this stuff could be lingering in a past in a current life as well especially if it's a soulmate connection uh past life love connection that you've managed to encounter again in this life um so let me know how that applies number six but i do feel like there was some kind of destiny or or divinely ordained or orchestrated situation here that put you on this spiritual path okay like you were divinely guided to to do this to follow this calling despite the fact that you fell in love with somebody but i could also see it as if somebody did abandon you if somebody did leave you this was your alternate choice like okay well if they don't want me then i don't want anybody and i'm gonna just devote myself to my church or my my uh, spiritual calling i'm going to devote myself to um to my deity or whatever it is you were doing because that lover didn't respond or reflect the love that you were trying to to give okay so there's two different ways to see that you either did not pursue the love connection that you had with this person because of your calling or the fact that they didn't love you back put you on that path okay i hope that makes sense and i made that clear um so yeah number six high priestess vibes for sure spiritual devotion you could have been a priest in a in a church as well you f you swore a vow because of a love that left you possibly or you left the love because you swore a vow okay so this is your reading stack number six people i hope this connects if it does please do let me know in the comment section down below um like share subscribe and click the bell for notifications because i do upload often whenever you click the bell you will get notified as soon as i upload and if you want to book a personal reading with me all my information is in the description box down below you can check out my etsy shop at any time and book a reading whenever you feel you need to so i'm gonna leave you here sending you much love and blessings to everybody watching and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.